speak to. Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to show you a video uh, about a range check I've been doing uh, for the uh, transmitters. Uh, so uh, to begin with I'm going to show you what was used. Um, the test was done on one of these uh, Walkmans. Uh, I've deliberately used this because first of all it's uh, small and secondly they're obviously not going to be as sensitive as a good car radio or a larger port uh, yeah, portable like that. So that's a good way to check sort of a minimum range. Okay, to make this simple, I'm just going to point uh, to the screen here and hope it all works. Um, the actual test I done was uh, outside. I'm just going to zoom into these so you can see what I used. Uh, I used um, some of those um, what is that, threaded uh, rods. You can see the specifications there. I used a couple of coupling... Uh, nuts to join the uh, bolts together um, and a screw, a couple of washers and that's the whole kit really, three couplings and I used three of the bars as well. Okay, right, the only problem, um, so let this go through the construction actually first. Okay, uh, also nearly forgot, I used uh, a pole, you can probably see the spec there. Okay, that was what I used for mounting the um, uh, transmitter. Okay, first thing I've done was get a piece of wire and just loop it around the screw and put a washer there to stop, yeah, to, to hold it nicely in place. Uh, then I got a, a plastic tub and I drilled a hole in the top, which is where the antenna is going to be. Uh, you can see that of um, uh, that's the top of the tub and that's the bench. You can see there. The screw goes through the tub and I've put one of the coupling uh, nuts on the end of the screw like that. And there's a view from the other side. Okay, and on the side of the um, uh, box was where the pole was at mount set. Uh, the first clamp, uh, I connected a grounding wire to that because the pole was sort of going to be like a ground connection. Uh, there you can see the side of the plastic tub with the first U-bolt um, um, securing the pole and the ground wire. And there's the completed side of the tub with both uh, bolts secured. And there's a view of the inside. I added a little bit of extra support uh, up there um, on the um, antenna end just to help stop wobbling. It didn't quite work as you'll see shortly. And this is oh you're still recording this. Um and here you can see this is actually yeah on the side the transmitter is mounted into the tub. You can see the uh, antenna wire going to the antenna bit, the ground wire going to the pole, and a whole couple of holes there drilled for the uh, power and audio inputs. Uh, there's two of the threaded rods uh, joined together with the coupling nut. And this is the first uh, attempt. It's actually on its side. There we go. Uh, right, now the first problem I had, you can see I've mounted the pole into the ground. The first attempt I had, the was it was just too bendy. And you can actually see it's sort of resting against the uh, side of the house there. Um... And also you can see there's actually trees around it, so it's surrounded by a house and trees. Now the close proximity to the house and the trees actually considerably reduced the range, as I discovered um, during the tests. Okay, uh, now what I decided to do, because the pole was, yeah, the, uh, the antenna was far too wobbly, I thought I'd get uh, a, a lighter weight, long telescopic antenna, which they use on, normally on remote control cars and things like that and uh, some screws and a coupling nut. You can see where I've mounted the screw into the antenna there. Uh, what I first done before I did that, I actually filed the edge of the screw down. The reason for that is so that it would nicely fit inside the coupling nut. I then soldered uh, the screw to the coupling nut like that. And that then gave me a little adapter so I could have the lightweight telescopic antenna on top of just two threaded uh, 
bolts now instead of three, so that helps a lot with the weight and the wobbliness. Uh, another problem I had was it's still a bit wobbly because the foot, because this is experimental. I actually used a cheap tub rather than a proper outdoor box, so the plastic wobbled too much. So I just mounted a couple of extra bits of plastic there to give it a bit more sterility. And there's the uh, finished project. You can see it's still a little wobbly again because I didn't use a decent uh, box, but you can see now um, there's the um, transmitter in the box and the um, antenna up there. Now then, this particular mounting was actually in open space instead of surrounded by the house and trees and it made a huge difference to the range. And just to finish off with, I'm going to give you some examples of the ranges I've got. Now as I say, the reason I used the, uh, the Walkman radio is because it's not going to be as sensitive as a, a good car radio or a good portable, so it gives it a, a, a good, fair, I don't know, uh, test of range. And these are the results I had. And uh, a few things, uh, the frequency made quite a large change and so did the clearing. So at 1240 kHz, 100 milliwatts, uh, on the first location surrounded by trees, the usable range was 200 feet. Now the way I done the range was the range in, which, in, in where the audio was still listenable. Although the signal did travel further beyond that range, uh, the interference started to spoil yeah, the quality of the received signal. So this is a usable range where the signal is still listenable, not the absolute maximum. Okay, so the listenable range 100 milliwatts at 1240 kHz was 200 feet. At 400 milliwatts, again surrounded by trees, it added 50 feet to the range. Uh, in the clear, um, you can see that the extra power just by having the transmitter away from obstacles was equivalent to boosting the power. So at 100 milliwatts, I now got 250 feet. And at 400 milliwatts, I got even further, I got 300 feet. Now another big change was upping the frequency. This was actually a huge change. Um, this is just because of the wavelength is shorter and uh, the, the antenna then becomes more efficient. So 1650 kilohertz, 100 milliwatts in the clear, the range was 400 feet. 1650 kilohertz, 400 milliwatts in the clear, the range was 500 uh, feet. Now then the last test was done without any ground using batteries and that was only 100 feet. So you can actually see a good ground is the most essential thing for a good range. If you haven't got a good ground, you might as well not be broadcasting at all. So you can see, yeah, the huge difference. So the transmitter has to be in the clear, it needs to be the highest frequency you can get away with, and it has to be grounded well for the maximum range. And again, these are the ranges where the signal was still enjoyable. Uh, the signal did travel further, the, the interference and static started to spoil the, the overall listening of the audio. So hopefully this will help uh, if you want to do some experimenting with your Part 15 transmitter. Thank you.